I wanted to, to go ahead and do a second part to what I shared last week. I hope I can get it all done today. But um, anyway, we were in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we were talking about, um, to, we, we pointed out the scripture that talked about uh, to everything there is a season and a time and, uh, and a purpose, God's purpose under the heavens. And, um, and of course, we read off the different a time to do this, a time to, to do that, a time to do this, a time to do that. All these different times and all these different seasons. But we discussed that there's one purpose, and that is that within all of those, and we use Jesus, mostly Jesus' uh, examples out of the, the Sermon of the Mount on how he was literally... I mean, I don't know if intentionally, but he was literally answering a bunch of the things that it says in Ecclesiastes. And so we got down to verse 11, and verse 11 is the, the pivotal point in the chapter of Ecclesiastes 3. And the first part of verse 11 lends itself back to what was uh, being said and what we talked about last week. And the second part of verse 11 uh, introduces a new side to all of this. And that new side is <clears throat> that while the first part is we can, we, can change every, we can change every season and every time by going to God's purpose instead of going with what that season's demanding or pulling upon our emotions or our lives or whatever that we can go with his purpose which is to bring forth the lamb to bring forth his son <clears throat> well the second part of this and the second part of verse 11 begins to talk to talk about those who will never do that who don't really even understand that purpose who are just living their lives on the earth and uh and he he sort of just points out um uh, I mean, this is where you get into vanity and vexation of spirit eventually here. But anyway, <clears throat> so verse 11, uh, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. And so there is, there is this point that he wraps up that, that any hard situation can be made beautiful by his purpose in his time when he brings forth his son and the appointed time of the father and but the rest of that verse goes on to say also and this is going to be talking to those who don't don't change their time or their seasons according to his purpose <clears throat> and that is also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Meaning that through, through the whole history of man, not just the whole history of our life, that purpose is available. And, and he's saying, but there are those that the world is set in their heart and they're, they're never going to really uh, understand that. They won't be able to, uh, the wording is, they... Uh, no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning unto the end. And then it begins to really highlight that. <clears throat> so just reading a couple of things that I wrote. With these words, Solomon then uh, directed his attention to those who will not live their life making everything beautiful. Uh, the world is in their heart. This keeps them from finding out his purpose from the beginning to the end. Uh, if in all these different times and seasons you react rightly by the lamb, then ev by the lamb, then everything is made beautiful, for they will all work together to make you conform to his image. But not everyone will enter his sufferings. Those who have the world in their hearts in all those circumstances, they will not be able to find out God's use of the work of fire or the work of death uh, and all the things that they, all the negatives that has already been mentioned in this chapter uh, and the work of suffering that are there from the beginning till the end, which they are there. So, these many and varied times and seasons will be as enemies to their earth life because, because they will live in the happy times, but when the negative times come, 
they don't know how to make it beautiful. They just, in fact, they just make it ugly. All right. So um, <clears throat> we'll look at verse uh, 12 and 13. And, and I wrote, in these verses, there's no eternal purpose in them. So God allows them to enjoy whatever they can as related to this life. He, he literally blesses them and says, okay, just enjoy your... You know, we get all upset. And I think the people that are trying to live for the Lord may get upset with them or whatever. But God just says, hey, let them, let them enjoy. If they like eating all the time, let them eat. If they like this or that, you know. <clears throat> so verse 12 and 13, I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life, meaning, you know, enjoying it. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all of his labor. It is the gift of God. That's what it says. You know? And then I wrote, God is not deceived. There's no good in their motives or actions with the world in their hearts. The best thing to do is to enjoy your short life in this world for it will soon be over. No need fretting over what they do. It's God's gift to them to eat and to drink and to enjoy the temporal things that they give themselves to do here. All right, and then uh, verse uh, 14, um, and my little beginning note says, but in verse 14, whatever God does in relationship to us has eternal value. When we're going to um, uh, change the times and the seasons by his purpose, then we're moving according to eternal purpose. Um, God's intervention in our lives is to bring about verses 1 through 10 to those who fear the Lord. So verse 14 says this, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it, and God doeth it that men should fear before him. So he's saying that, well, I'll read the note, but he's, he's just saying, look, what God does is eternal. And, um, you know, uh, man, people that are off from that purpose, there's nothing they can do that's going to turn that purpose. That is, like it said earlier, that's the beginning and the end. That's the way he works. He works according to that purpose. So, I wrote, so in verse 14, whatever God does, that's eternal. And no one can stop it or change it. Change what? The thing that God does concerning the things that will come of blessings or sufferings. God does those things. So we will reverence his purpose and be with him instead of resisting. We have to face that this is how he works in every generation. And it will not cease. For it is how he weighs and finds where our hearts are. And that's, that's declared in the next verse, verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is, is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. So I said that which he speaks here is still to those found in verse 14. This, this fact can also be seen by verse 14 where he changes he changes who is now talking to. So he is talking to the wicked. He is talking to the ones who will never know his purpose, which he's already stated. Since God and his desire is to get his lamb offered up, then past, future, or present all have the same purpose. Okay. Now, verse 16 and 17. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there. Meaning, and this, the word judgment really here is the word of, of justice. And the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So, two different kinds of judgment. One is, well, let me just read this. Because uh, if I'm going to get through with this, 
Um, when God looks under the sun, he sees the place for justice and he sees wickedness there. And in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. All men will be judged based on every work, whether it was carried out according to his purpose, and will be judged, but, there's, but the judgment will be enter into the joy of the Lord. That's the judgment. <laughs> Those that have gone with his purpose. Or according to men who are just being motivated by what time and season it was under the sun. The judgments will come based on those things. Okay. And then uh, I read verse 16. So in verse 16, he sees two groups that have not understood or entered his sufferings. One is the place of wickedness, such as evildoers, and the other was the, was the righteous who are lawless to his nature. All of that is under the sun, not in him. It's all under the sun. God will judge the righteous who are mentioned first this time in verse 16, because judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Then he judges the wicked. The judgments will be at different times or based on different situations, different issues as well as different motives. Um, and the motives are those which cause the actions that we do. We always think it's the action, whatever I did, but there was a motive behind it. All right, in verse 18... <laughs> Let me read this before I read verse 18. We're doing pretty good, actually. <laughs> I just need to keep going. <clears throat> uh, Solomon, in his heart, considered the state and considered God's dealing with the sons of men. What God will do is to send times and seasons to them of various sorts for them to manifest their true nature. The range of these events will bring this out and prove to themselves that they are but beasts in their responses towards others. So now this is reading verse 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they are themselves that are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beast. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they all have one breath. So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity, no purpose. Just moved by the times and the seasons. Just like an animal uh, would do. <clears throat> So I wrote, Solomon in his wisdom perceived that God will bring about certain situations of trials in which those of this earth will manifest what's really in them instead of living under the facade and supposed goodness as to how they perceive themselves, meaning he's going to make them manifest eventually to see what they really are. These circumstances are meant to manifest their true nature and so will prove to themselves that in truth they are just like beasts in nature and not lambs. Okay, and then finally, verse 19. For that's what, that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all has been vanity, for all is vanity, for all has been vanity. So their treatment toward God and others that prove them as beasts should confirm their eternal destinies. Just as animals merely go into death, even so, they have no preeminence above beasts to God. And in that recognition, they will see that whether human beasts or animal beasts, they will all partake of one breath and of one destiny, death. So just as all animal beasts manifest what they are in nature while in this life, so they have no existence after death. For them all that they do here 
and all that they will have beyond this life is but vain and purposeless. So are the human beasts, and so will be their destinies. So that's it. She's showing me. I got five minutes. So, uh, it, so it's so interesting. I really didn't think I'd get this far. I'm so but it's just so interesting because the, the build up that he had from what we shared last week where he's saying there is, there is, yes, there is seasons, a time to kill or a time to hate or a time to do this. And those seasons come in and those are seasons to our nature and they are seasons to, to life that, that life is going to bring all kinds of situations. But he says, but he's got another purpose. There is God's purpose, and God's purpose is to form his son in us, his lamb in us, and in so doing, then, then um, um, how did he put it, that, that he makes all things beautiful. You can literally make all things beautiful <laughs> by um, um, ignoring the time or the season and bringing in his purpose for his son. And in doing that, then you literally change the times. You change it from being a time to kill to a time to lay down your own life. And he says, this is beautiful. He makes everything. When he does this, he makes everything beautiful. And then he starts talking about uh, those who don't understand this. They don't see this. All is vanity and under under the sun and and they um, their lives are lived according almost like a pinball machine wherever you hit that ball and if it goes over here and hits this thing that thing might be you know a time to to kill or whatever um, they react to it because they're living down here um, and he just starts going through. He starts really pointing out that they have, they have the world in their heart. And, and he doesn't even get angry in the sense. I mean, justice is just justice. It's not, you know. But he doesn't get angry. He says, you know, uh, I'm going to let them just live their life and let them enjoy the, the things of this life and <laughs> instead of taking everything away from them, you know, no, you can't have a beer or whatever, you know. Um, uh, he, he allows, you know, enjoy those things. But it was, but just know that all of that is vanity and all of that has no, nothing eternal within it. Therefore, it can't, go into eternity, if you will, true eternity, because God's the only thing that's truly eternal without beginning and without end. And, um, and then he wraps it up with just saying, now, you know, don't get upset, but you must understand that they are the same as beasts. They go where to, toward stuff that they like or want or what want to eat and they they uh, you know but that which is eternal goes towards the father's heart and uh, he said I mean his explanation of that is that they all have one breath it's the same breath it's going to end the same way and it will be in death and there will be no more existence after that not in that in that sense and um, so there's there's actually a lot more I don't think I'm going to come back and share that's that is the end of, um, of Ecclesiastes 3 or at least the part that I was going to talk about but but just for your knowing all of that stuff about vanity and vexation of spirit it is just by it's only based on missing that which is important, that is eternal, and it in, in its very nature is eternal, and therefore will, depending on uh, if we relate to it properly, will result in living eternally. See, not just live live eternal life, but that which is eternal, the Lamb within us we will not be seen as beasts because we won't be. 
we will be lambs. <laughs> we will be lambs. And then Jesus sits on a throne to judge all nations. And he separates, he sees, he sees only two things. He sees sheep and he sees goats and they're all mingled together. And he moves the sheep to his right hand. And he says, enter in to the joy of the Lord. And he takes the goats and he moves them to his left hand. And they're removed because there is no eternity in them. It's just vanity and vexation of spirit. That's the judgment. There it is. That's the judgment. Father, we just, we just honor you. We honor your way. We honor your uh, desire for us to live with purpose, for us to live um, with desire, true heart for your Son and for your ways, and to have your Son worked into us in such a way that all vanity will be removed as we take every season, every time under heaven, and we change it into purpose, your purpose. And we al allow that to work in us. And Father, I just pray this prayer for all who are on or that listen to this or view this. Father, I just pray this prayer for all of us that if there are any that just say, I can't do this, it's impossible, it seems so impossible, but if you can, with, with all of my doubts and fears of how far I, off I am, if I can't do it, I ask you, would you do it? Would you do it in me? Would you make it real? Not because I'm worthy or because my prayers mean anything, but because I ask you, do it and be glorified by your Son. Father, I'm not praying that prayer just for me. I'm praying that prayer for, for all who hear this, who who look at themselves and wonder if it's ever possible. Are they just a beast? Are they just... Father, let them agree with that prayer to you that we ask. But if you can do it, if you can bring forth eternity in this vessel, then we ask you to do it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you joined in on that prayer because it's it's uh, it's a prayer that'll reach into his heart. Speaking of hearts, <laughs> it's a prayer that'll reach into his heart, and he wants it. He doesn't desire that any perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> be blessed. You are loved, so be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, y'all.